obviously. Stephen A. That's what I used to call him, Stephen A. Like Stephen A. Smith. They call him Stephen A. Yeah, you're right there. I didn't know where it was. You're right there. Okay, I didn't know. Brad, looking good as ever, bro. Thanks for not wearing your clown outfit. That's a pillow with socks in, man. I love the socks. <laughs> First of all, mine does here? too. Oh. Are we, are we good to move? Yes, I think so. All right, sooner or better, right? Yep. I don't want to mess up our TV coverage, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yours is good back there. We good? All right, let's go ahead and get started. Come in. Welcome to tonight's uh, Lower Paxton Township Authority meeting uh, for Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. First item of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Oaks. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. As to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, here we go. Mr. Oaks, thank you. All right, uh, first item of business is the approval of the minutes from our, wow, our November 24th, 2020 meeting. Wow, that was a long time ago. Man, okay. Everybody have a chance to read the minutes? Is there any comments on the minutes? The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. So, so move that we approve the uh, board meeting of 11 24 20. Mr. Zumas makes a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Navarro. I mean, that sounded like you were like in space or something like that. All right, we got a motion on the floor in a second. Any further comments? Hearing none, all those in favor seeing the five was saying aye. 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 Opposed, so carried. Public comment. All right, we'll skip public comment because there's no public here to comment. <laughs> all right, board member comments. I mean, if we go at this rate, we'll be done by 7.15. <laughs> except, Mr. Ex except our township engineer has a lengthy, and I mean lengthy, presentation that I actually had to have them cut like eight slides out of it because it was too long. All right, let's go to the stormwater fund. First item of business, resolution 2103, amending the stormwater management program credit and incentive policy manual. Mr. Weaver. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, staff and uh, HRG met uh, to review several applications. We have had three stormwater fee app, uh, credit applications to date. Following the review of these applications and discussions with the customers and developers, staff and HRG recommend several amendments to the current credit policy to clarify certain credits and to correct several minor, minor typographical errors. Uh, the typo was the adopt -a inlet. So the adopt -a inlet was checked for commercial and we didn't see a way that we could financially document uh, giving commercial accounts that have $10,000 in fees um, credit for maintaining an inlet. So after we spoke, uh, we had found uh, some other, you know, small clarifications. Mostly uh, the, the most important were the credit calculation itself. Uh, basically, the credit calculations, there's examples under uh, attachment E, but it, it does not address all circumstances for eligible credits and final credits uh, determinations will be as directed by the stormwater engineer so we didn't want to have 
um, confusion with um, other engineers on how these credits were going to be calculated. So we put in that caveat that we have in many specs that we have the right as determined by the engineer to, ca to calculate the final credit because it does get complex. Uh, Jason's now got two from uh, Triple Crown for Blue Ridge Village. Uh, and these peak flow control facilities, there's a lot of engineering that goes into that and how they calculate those credits. So we wanted to just clarify that Jason, his firm, will determine those credits for that. Other than that, uh, we did simplify. One other big thing was the low impact parcel. There was a bunch of, again, calculations that were required. Um, we didn't see that as a fairness to a lot of the agricultural people that don't have the ability to have an engineer to um, show maps and so forth. So we just did some clarifications under the low impact parcel description that basically if your property is 10% less or, or uh, less in impervious surface to the total parcel area, then you just get the credit. Um, so what Steve and I started doing years ago, instead of doing amendments and then trying to track amendments, if you the supervisors were no amending ordinances is problematic so how we do it with the authority is i think the cleanest way to do it steve and i talked about is just to readopt the whole thing even though we only had a few uh corrections and those obviously were in a email uh, memo from kevin fox that summarized those few changes i didn't even ask kevin to be here because to be honest i didn't uh, feel we necessary to pay him to come because again these were just minor uh, typographical errors, uh, basically making it easier for a low impact parcel person. As I went through all this, I'll just quickly tell the board that we did do a, a good bit of research because my theory was if we wanted to amend this once, it's, let's you know study it more. So I went as far down to Virginia and uh, they had multitude of residential credits for like rain gardens and um, tree canopies. So HRG and Randy and I met and we just thought, is this something we really want to consider? And we looked into it, the staff time to even try to do something like that. And we reduced the fee by 20%. So we figured who's going to really do this? Um, if customers want us to add it someday, fine. But we didn't see the need to add in all these residential credits because their fees down to $104 per year and they get 10%. So it's $10, I mean, for these things and it'll cost them hundreds to thousands to do it. So it became a non-issue, but a lot of other people had it. So I thought, well, I'll just look into it. And we kind of shook that tree and didn't feel it was in our best interest to propose that to the board. So it's in final form and staff and hrg recommend approval of the revised credit policy and resolution and i'll be happy to answer any questions the board has any board member questions for mr weaver or mr Knoll? any staff uh, the township engineer i think it's pretty you know i think when you, you implement a uh, a um credit program like this and the incentive program that was so extensive and is brand new to the township that we just literally put in place I, it makes sense that you're going to have situations where you're going to have to amend it or make some changes to it as you go along and i do agree with the idea that you know instead of adopting small changes here and there and then trying to, to implement it into the whole policy let's just readopt the whole policy as is with all the changes in it it's cleaner we think Anybody have any further questions? All right. If the hearing none, is there a motion to approve resolution 2103? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 2021-03 as presented by Mr. Weaver. There's a motion on the floor by Ms. Lindsay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Oaks. Any further discussion? I think we can do this by voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. All right, Mr. Hitt, this is the time. You're excited, aren't you? To do a presentation <laughs> of the Stormwater Management Program MS4 Permit Five-Year Capital Improvement Plan. You are, you've been practicing. You've been ready to go. You've been rehearsing this. You're, you're ready, aren't you? you it's a mouthful, form. isn't it? It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Chairman, Jason and I are going to tag team. We sort of did this together, and I'm going to 
start out the slides and he's going to pick up. So I, I just wanted to tell the board that staff and HRG have this brief 20 to 30 minute PowerPoint presentation on our five year MS4 capital costs. We've never officially presented a five year capital plan to the board for stormwater fund. And as you're aware, we've learned a great deal in the last two years since the inception of the stormwater fee. So to be, there's going to be a quiz on slide two here. Yeah, no, the they're basically Everybody needs to know what these definitions are. Right. You, you have this in your packet <laughs> and over the next five to 10 years, you will be hearing these acronyms in great length. So I just wanted to provide those acronyms to the board. <laughs> so the next slide is the basically the stormwater management MS4 program components. So the components of the whole program are listed there. So we have a PADEP MS4 permit. It's effective 8-1, expires July 31st, 2025. And as part of that, there's what we call these stormwater management program um, minimum controls, BMPs. There's six minimum controls. And Jason's going to go over all those in a few minutes. And the permit also has uh, pollution control measures, and those requirements are under B and C. And also, the board is very familiar with the Joint Pollution Reduction Plan, which we partnered with CRW and Susquehanna. And those sedimentation uh, reduction requirements are Appendix E and F. And then we have basically the Stormwater Management uh, Pipe Replacement Program. That's what I want to go over with you today as well. That's a uh, large component is our Capital Improvement Plan for Stormwater Replacements. And basically, the MS4 permit uh, requires an annual report to be submitted by September 30th of each, of each year for permit activities uh, from July 1st to, um, to June 30th of each year. And HRG basically submits that report on behalf of the authority. That's just a summation of each of those. And Jason's going to go into more details about those. And again, this is just to show you the slide that basically you do have a requirement uh, for these MS4 uh, Appendix B requirements for implementing uh, these fecal coliform uh, pathogen um, identifications. And basically all that is is they want you to look at outfalls and have an inventory of any known areas, um, basically su suspected sources that you could have. That map has been prepared. And then Appendix C, that's the PCM for the uh, implementation of impaired waters identified by DEP as priority organic compounds. These include PCBs, pesticides, or others. So this requires us to develop the map of the outfalls and the inventory and then investigate. Man, we're on Appendix C and F DNF now. Jeez. MS4 permit requirements. This is the what we thought... Uh, initially, we're going to get into more detail about the cost of this later, was uh, the the genesis for our stormwater fee was these PRP um, plan costs, and that's under Appendix D and F. So Chesapeake Bay, you've heard this many times, that's a 10% short-term requirement. Paxton Creek, TMDL, 35%. We also have to address Wildwood Lake, Spring Creek, and sediment reductions must be completed by July 31st, 2025. And the PRP has 16 BMPs and seven alternatives. And the board did uh, approve this agreement. This is the, um, the the joint plan with CRW and Susquehanna. We submitted and got approved uh, and is now part of our permit. Our cost share is 57%. That's based on baseline sediment loadings. Susquehanna is 27, CRW is 16. The original estimate was twelve million seven nine five for the whole plan for five years, and our share seven point two million. But we're going to happy to report that that's a lot lower than we expected. So starting with the G, the joint PRP, uh, this is the most activity. We're getting an echo here. Yeah, I'll go up. So we've uh, been doing a lot of work with HRG and the partners and PennDOT on the implementation of the uh, Joint Pollutant Reduction Plan. Even though it's five years, uh, we were first contacted uh, by PennDOT to purchase sediment reduction removal credits as partners to a PennDOT project. Uh, 
Our, our contribution was $1 million for the partners, and PennDOT put in $1 million. So our share was 57%, which is $570,000. So the PennDOT contract was awarded to RES, and their sediment reduction goal was 1.7 million pounds. Uh, not their reduction goal, excuse me. Our reduction goal is 1.7 million as the group. And this project will accomplish 33% of that goal, which is 575,000 pounds. I just did find out today, actually, that may go up. So I may report to you at the next meeting uh, that that could go up a little bit. The PennDOT partners have indicated a desire to increase the contract value by 25%. And because the costs are uh, very inexpensive, uh, because PennDOT can do this as a design build, uh, our cost to do it is about $5 to $6 a pound. And because we're sharing credits, the total cost is $3.48 a pound, but as the group, we're splitting those costs. So believe it or not, right now our costs are $1.70 a pound on this PennDOT contract. So obviously, we're recommending, and we'll come to the board shortly, to increase that value by 25%, which is an additional 111,000 pounds. And then Stonebridge, which Jason's going to go over in a few minutes, that's 166,000. So the total of all current planned projects is 853,000. That's 51 percent of the total 1.7 million so we're about halfway there and then the next slide basically just nailing down the cost i wanted to provide to the board uh where we are in the total cost so phase one that's 570 phase two we would be 285,000. stonebridge our share is 259 so the remaining pounds is 863 at at the 550 a pound unfortunately we can't do pen dot for the whole five-year plan that's about 4.5 million. So that's another 2.6. So the total new estimate for our share of the five-year PRP is 3.7 million. If you remember from the previous slide, it was 12.7. Um, our estimate for our 57% was 7.2. So you can see that the potential savings so far, based on all this new information in the last two or three years, is 3.5 million. That's, that's impressive. Yes, that's good news. Yeah, well, good news. we like good news. So then, just briefly, the stormwater management pipe replacement five-year capital improvement plan. Again, we've never reviewed this with the board. So what uh, HRG and Jeff and I uh, basically uh, looked at is um, what projects they have over a five-year period. And phase one would be also to continue replacements within the planned sewer consent decree mini basin. So Jeff and Jason met with Tim and I, and we looked at, okay, in the next five to six years, we're doing a lot of work. So we better focus on that. Uh, so we've done that, and then we're calling that phase one. So we have uh, some information to provide you on that on the next couple slides. Then phase two, that's basically Jeff looking at the system, getting the complaints, saying, okay, we got to do work in other areas that are outside the many basins. And then phase three is to begin a condition assessment of additional areas for stormwater conveyance systems. So we're going to do an internal televising um, contract that Steve has authorized me to do on CoStars because we're under prevailing wage requirements, and then inlet inspections. And then next slide, basically, this is the total five-year cost. So when you look at your stormwater management program pipe replacement cost for each of these projects, so you remember in 2019, we had the $776,000 contract. Uh, that was the Goose Valley, Forest Hills, now we have the MacMore, that's 989, which I think they're getting ready to start soon, Jason, right? A few. Yeah, most likely in the next two months they'll be starting. And we're currently in the BC2, BC5 mini basin, which we're about halfway through there. And that is 2.2 million. That's under construction with Dolly. And that includes the paving and concrete costs. And then BC7, the engineer's estimate is about... I think 60% complete. So this this may change, right, Jason? Yeah, that's based on our 60% design. Oh, you say that there, yeah, right. right. Yep. So that's five million. And then the Forest Hills uh, project that you're starting to design next year, I believe. Uh, it'll most likely be later this year. This year, uh, okay. with hopes of construction next year. Okay, so that's 1.1 million. So your total five-year cost for storm. Pike replacements is nine million twenty-seven thousand. Average annual cost about one point eight million a year. Okay. 
You're hustling through this, Bill. Yes. You must have really practiced. Well, I think I took over most of Jason's slide that I forgot to give it to him. <laughs> I don't think he's complaining, though. You're Here's doing good. Personally. <laughs> so the stormwater uh, program pipe replacements, uh, the, the board recalls we do them every three years, right, the, bo the bond issues. So in order to show you a complete picture for a five-year period, then you actually have to go out further. So this is basically the second five-year capital plan for 24 to 28. Because you recall, your, your permit requ um, requirements go until July 2025. So this slide basically shows you going pretty far out now, this PC3E mini basin, that's Claremont. And then we have Centennial Acres. And then we have other improvement projects that I don't know if Jason and Jeff have even thought about yet. I'm sure Jeff has in his mind. We keep telling him to write them down before he retires. Uh, but basically, this is really, really rough. So... Um, we have a metric um, that we use for sewer that I didn't really run by Jason yet, so I'll have to fine-tune those with him down the next couple years. But basically use a metric cost per foot. We have the GIS from Tim on the length of the pipe. So this is basically a metric saying your, your total five-year cost for the second five-year period is $10 million, and then that average annual cost is about two. So then you go into your stormwater management components for the five-year breakdown. So your total five-year O&M costs for all the uh, MCMs and BMPs is $7.5 million. That's all the costs for the township to run the authority through the management agreement. That includes all the payroll, street sweeping, leaf collection. So that's your O&M costs. Those are hard numbers that we show you every year in the budget, and that's basically taking the annual cost times five. And then I just showed you the five-year capital cost for the sewer and the P PRP. So I just wanted to give you a picture of MS4 and why we created the stormwater fee. It's not cheap. So your total five-year MS4 permit costs are $20,262. Million. And then just wanted to go over briefly we're, 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 the current statuses of the bond issue from 2019. So we're gearing up but we're spending money slowly. Um, we have basically a balance of the, uh, of the original issue in 2019 of 10 million, we have 7.2 million left. And this basically just shows the projects that we have remaining to spend down that money over the next three years. Uh, I won't bore you with all those because they were just all in the previous slides. Now there is the back truck. We, we are gonna, uh, we, well, the, the board already approved that budget. I'm sorry. You, we are uh, having a vac truck built. So the stormwater, that's the beauty of the stormwater fee and the stormwater fund and, and, and that whole operation we get to share with sewer and both of those uh, purchases for TV and vac trucks, all that kind of stuff. So that just basically just shows you all the projects you're going to be doing in the next three years. And then this next bond issue, this is... Uh, Basically, sort of the bad news is that the first bond issue was $10 million, but the second one is $12.8. And the reason is these mini basins are very big and pipe replacement is expensive. Uh, so we're going to, at the end of the presentation, tell you the lessons that we've learned. These financial things are part of that, and we have some ideas to try to reduce costs, so, sort of like we did with the sewer system as well. So these are all the listed things that I just went over. BC7, 1F, Centennial Acres, da da da. So you're you're looking at 12.8 million on your next bond issue uh, that we project. You know that'll be sometime at the end of 2022, uh, early 2023. I, I listed there December 2022 for now. So one of the things I've talked to Jay and John about, they'll certainly be coming to see you later this year, or early next year, as we get better numbers. Um, the way the sewer presentation is going to be in April, but these kind of go together. So what they're telling me now is that you can look at these $10 million bank qualified bonds. You can save in issuance costs and, and interest, and it's maybe cheaper money. So if somehow we can get this 12.8 down to 10, there's a potential to do a $10 million bank qualified bond at the end of next year. And we're also looking at it on the sewer side. 
And this is all the hard work that Randy and Jason have been doing. Um, I know the board loves to hear about grant applications. So, you know, during this presentation, I wanted to tell the board that they've certainly done a, a good bit of work. Uh, they've had several denied. You can see those three there, but we have had two approved. We've had the uh, Stonebird project for 275,000, and we have the DEP educational grant in cooperation with the DCD, and that is the 50 grain barrels. And we have two in process. This is the uh, same thing that Randy put in above, but he's modifying it uh, for um, what he's learned in the first grant application to fine tune it to maybe get it approved or just keep trying. Uh, these are just the, all the bioretention facility. It's basically detention facilities making them bioretention. And then we have the submission for the small watershed grant program, which actually just found out again that we got denied that. But so the point is that uh, we are continuing to uh, pursue grants. Uh, Jason has offered his services as well. They have a staff that's um, well versed in evaluating which grant programs could work for our stormwater program. Bill, so, can I just ask you a question on the 50 rain barrels? We were supposed to have um, like a presentation and they were all going to be given out, but then COVID came. So have yes. those 50 rain barrels been given out? No, they are scheduled to do those soon. Okay. Uh, they have um, 50 people, I believe, were first come, first served right. that were already right. selected. So right. the county and Randy are working on getting those distributed okay. because of COVID. It just kept, but I think it's happening in the next few weeks. I can give you an update at the, at the next okay. meeting. Just curious. Yep. So this is uh, the next slide is something that the group got together and thought it would be good to come up with a joint PRP group emblem. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Dave, there you go. So we had uh, many fun conversations about what the best uh, emblem would be, but Madison is the, um, I forget Madison's last name. Smith. Madison Smith, thank you. She is uh, the new MS, MS4 coordinator at Susquehanna. So she has some experience, previous experience at the uh, Northern Sweater or? Lower Sweater. Lower Sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Close. So actually, I won't take any credit for this, Emma, because basically Madison from Susquehanna did it. I thought she did a great job. So this we put on our letterhead for our grant applications, and we're going to make some signs and then put them at uh, all of our completed projects. So I thought they did a great job with that. So then a little bit about the lessons learned. So what we learned that I just showed is that the sediment re reduction costs are less than expected. That's good. The bad news is the pipe re replacement costs are greater than expected. In long term, we're going to have to start evaluating other alternatives. Uh, I was telling Mr. Blaine the other day that when I took this metric and ran it out over 35, 40 years, as you're wearing sewer, we go out that long. It, it's not financially sustainable because your debt would be close to sewer, like $200 million when you basically inflate it. Um, so, you know, Jason and I met with uh, their staff, and they all agree that uh, one of the most important things that we have to do in the next four to five years is start assessing our system and seeing, you know, what we can salvage because uh, replacing it all. And it's not necessary really for sewer. I mean, for sewer it is because, as you know, pipes leak and then they cause sewer backups and sewer overflows. Storm pipes are a little different. Jason can explain more. His fear is more uh, the safety of the roads. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about that, Jason? It... Sure. It, it, it's just basically the obligation to the safety, health, and welfare of the public more so than, um, than anything else. And uh, a lot of the system is located within the, the township street system. So obviously maintaining the drainage system has an impact on the, uh, the roadways. Jason, would that create sinkholes? Possibly. It has the potential to, yes. So initially, because we have not had a contract, Tim is going to work on that in the next year. Um, we did some assessments in the right-of-ways um, to help with lining, uh, determine, okay, can we salvage some pipes in the right-of-ways and can they line them? But we haven't done a full-blown assessment. So those costs that I'm showing you right now for the next six years 
um, are all replacement because we we don't have a choice because we we have to get a contract out and we don't you know it takes time it takes years to assess all this pipe uh, so those costs that I just showed you before that's built into the rate table and it doesn't affect our 104 fee I'm talking long term 10 20 30 years out so anyway just wanted to make sure that the board was aware that we are looking at other alternatives because pipe that's one of our big lessons learned um, costs a lot of money Good news, though. So the pipe replacements reduced the sanitary sewer mini basin cost by 25% because they share all the pavement and concrete costs. So we had to go to GHD and say, look, guys, you're looking at the 70, 80, 90 million that's left for us to do on the sewer side. Can you go back and rerun all these numbers, take it off this 25% in paving costs? So they're doing that right now, and then we're going to show you that in April. And then the historical mapping, we found there's some inaccuracies. So we're, Tim is working with that. Uh, we, we, as you're aware, we did hire a GIS technician, and Tim is basically running the program with her and hiring interns every summer. We actually get really qualified interns. You have two right now, right, Tim, that you're hiring? Yeah, we have uh, two at this point that are pending background checks, but really, really qualified candidates this year. So really happy with how that program's going. How do you how do you recruit them, Tim? Um, we put together a job a job uh, just basic advertisement, and then we reach out to some of the programs. You know, we're we're kind of looking for someone that's uh, has some kind of GIS oriented program. So we reach out to like Shippensburg. Um, Penn State, Harrisburg, Millersville, some of the local colleges to that have programs that are that are good for okay. for GIS. Good. Thank you. So then uh, we're going to have a phase two of the GIS that we just talked about, which is the assessment of all these different assets, and then the design engineering for combined sewer and storm projects requires one engineer for for design for efficiency. So we did talk to the board about that. We love HRG, we love GHD. Uh, they're both uh, leaders in their field for stormwater and sewer. However, it is, it's a huge effort, and, and I have to say Jason and Kevin from GHD have done a great job working together, so I applaud both of them. But uh, Tim will tell you that obviously having two engineers do one document, and it's just not efficient. So uh, we will be doing an RFP uh, in the future, uh, and we hope HRG or GHD get one of them get that job. So the uh, next slide basically is moving from lessons learned to what the future planning needs to be. I know the board uh, has been um, getting a lot of uh, information from the county stormwater program and how that will impact our program. Uh, that's sort of hit a brick wall. Um, there are some potential savings in the second five-year MS4 permit cycle because DEP, uh, HRG has advised us that they anticipate they're going to focus on agricultural projects and riparian buffers. So that is going to be a huge advantage to partner with the county because we just don't have the agricultural sites to do these riparian buffers. So I haven't heard anything from the county. Jason, I don't know if you've heard anything, but I think they're having trouble getting that program off the ground because we already have Susquehanna LP and CRW together and there's not that many counties that have permits uh, right now so do you have any update there no I, I just know that they're still gauging the um, the interest for participation they have had a few <coughs> municipalities sign on but I don't think that the program has uh, gotten up and running just yet so the late the latest that uh, we heard was a few months ago and they were going to come to the board and go over the costs and what it would mean to our program and uh, we'll just keep you updated if they still choose to do that uh, we just told them that right now it wasn't uh, really financially feasible for us because we're already partners with other people but if they could make it financially rewarding in the first five-year term we're, we're definitely all in in the second five-year term because uh, there's a huge benefit for us in that phase but so we'll keep the board updated there. So that's the future planning for that. And then the budget for stormwater conveyance extensions. Um, 
I talked to Brad and, and Jeff. We had a, a special meeting to go over stormwater stuff. And one of the things that I just put out there is uh, what I've learned from uh, talking to other authorities that uh, when I met with them about their credit programs, I found that they did put money in their budget if somebody wanted to get a storm sewer system extended that was never done. So really brief history here is that only half the township has stormwater because stormwater ordinances went around in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So as you're aware, there's many developments in this township that don't have any stormwater systems. So when Steve and I spoke, legally, we have no requirement to run them because, as you know, when you run a sewer line, you have to assess uh, tapping fees, front foot assessments. So I was just saying to Steve, like, how do you even do that? Well, basically, there are no legislative uh guidelines yet we expect those to come out but what these other authorities are doing is saying hey look we put 500,000 in there whatever the board wants to do we'll propose that to you in the 2022 budget you can elect to do it as recommended by the engineer and the public works director so well that's part of our future plan to go over with the board we think it's probably a good idea because obviously we're charging a fee those people are, are paying a fee but they don't have actual stormwater systems but we can't run it for everybody so it's going to be you know as the engineer recommends that'd be a true rainy day fund pretty much <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> they well they called the fee the rain tax down in maryland too but so then the sewer department, as you're aware, has been doing private sewer replacements uh, for years. And um, these mini basins uh, also have the stormwater replacements. So what I was saying to Brad and Jeff, I, I was shocked when I saw the cost per foot to put in the stormwater. So we save a little bit um, on the private replacement. Chris Judd isn't here tonight, and he's asked me. I think, Dave, you... So Dave, you or Robert, maybe both of you have asked me as well, is, is the I and I crew saving money? And the answer is we are a little bit. We save the most where they're at right now where there's underground utilities because the bid prices are really high for sewer replacements. But I was telling Brad and Jeff is down the road, I want to seriously look at using our crew to start doing stormwater because the savings could be much higher. Uh, our guys say they never been trained but they think they don't really need training we can have jeff and his guys go out and help them initially but down the road in a year or two we're seriously looking at having our guys move over to the stormwater fund budget and have them go at these mini basins and replace stormwater and see how much money we can save so we'll be reviewing that with the board next year and then the inspection staff same thing we already have all this geared up staff for the consent decree well hrg they have inspectors that inspect the stormwater system. So we start asking these questions, well, why can't our guys inspect the stormwater? So again, we'll be proposing that to the board shortly. And again, taking all the stuff from the sewer project, Tim manages all the sanitary sewer system replacements. So we save three and a half to 5% generally is what engineers charge to manage a construction project. So that's why we hired Tim to have those savings and also to have some continuity within the authority staff. So then the question becomes then, why don't we have Tim manage the stormwater? Right now, Jason's doing it. He's doing a fine job too, by the way. So he, he probably won't want to hear that, but down the road, that may be something the authority may want to consider. Uh, Tim is very busy, but I think you said, you, would you be able to handle that, Tim? Doing yeah, I think so. We have a pretty good team, you know, with with the inspectors and um, been working together for a couple of years. So I think there's there's a lot of trust there, and uh, I think we could handle it. So we'll be looking at it as well. And finally, just the two other things. This is more just the actual asset itself. Uh, we have not transferred the developer installed stormwater conveyance systems. Quite honestly, we're a little overwhelmed with all this work that we have to do adding on stormwater tim and i with all the planning and construction so i did meet with steve and met with jason we we sort of have an idea how to accomplish this um basically the the stormwater system is part of the street and when it's dedicated it's still part of the township system but we need to transfer that asset to the authority so steve recommended we just do a quick claim deed right steve yeah. so 
We will be doing quick claim deeds here shortly, transferring the last two years of the stormwater developments. There's probably about 10 or 15. And as part of that, we're going to recommend some other ordinance revisions to accomplish that and provide more access for Randy Allen, our MS4 coordinator, to get into uh, MS4 uh, inspection um, areas that we have to do as well. There was a weird change, Jason, I don't know if you heard this or you know why, but our draft permit required us to adopt a new ordinance, a new stormwater ordinance by 2022. There was a draft, well, it's not a draft, it's a required county ordinance or whatever, but the actual final permit we got, it changed that to 2024. So some people might have complained or, do you know why that changed at all? I think it was just the timing aspect. I think the issuance of the, the permit came a little bit later than uh, what DEP had originally anticipated. So I, I think it's just a, an effect of the timing. So we will be meeting with Jason and Steve to see, okay, is it worth, if the township's going to make ordinance changes in the next year or two, do we want to go ahead and make these minor changes to the stormwater ordinance now um, or just want to wait? Or could you do the whole ordinance early, I guess, Jason? Would that be the smarter thing to do? Um, it, it, either would work. I, I think there is some benefit to waiting and, and seeing how it plays out maybe in other locations that enact it. Uh, and yeah. if, there's, if there's things that should be updated or, or modified. Is there significant impacts to developers? No, it's, it, it, it's not very different from the current version. It's just some, um, some updates um, related to enforcement. Um, more so than anything else so it's it's not going to be a complete overhaul of what the current regulations and requirements in the ordinance are and then i will turn it over to jason since i stole all his other slides he, he can he can bring up he can bring up the rear thank you sure so I, i'm going to give a, a brief overview of the the stone bridge project there's a lot of detail on that project in the engineer's report and I have some graphics at the end here that will show kind of the, the scope of the project. So I'm just gonna give a general update and hit on some of the high points here. Um, right now, we're, we're very close to completion with the design. Um, it's about 95% pending DEP's review. Uh, the permit has been under review with them since uh, November, or September of 2020. We did receive our erosion and sediment pollution control plan approval from the uh, Dauphin County Conservation District in January. Likewise, all of the easements that we needed for the project have been acquired. Um, so coordination with the, with the property owner um, was very, uh, very cooperative, I will say. Um, Bill mentioned it earlier, there is a CFA Watershed Restoration and Protection Program grant in hand to partially fund the construction phase of the project. Uh, $275,000 was awarded for that. The current construction cost estimate is just around the $730,000 uh, range. As Bill mentioned, those costs will be shared per the uh, intergovernmental agreement. Uh, the next steps for the project are to uh, receive the permit from DEP. There are several uh, utilities that need to make some adjustments to their facilities prior to the stream restoration work occurring. So we'll be working with them to ensure that that occurs. Uh, we'll work on finalizing the bid package and actually advertising the project to get a contractor uh, on board. And then also um, the plan will ultimately be recorded along with an O&M agreement that was executed by the property owner um, to obligate them for the long-term uh, maintenance responsibilities with the, with the stream. So our estimated project schedule as of today, we're still waiting to receive the, uh, the permit from DEP. Hopefully we get that here in the next few weeks, um, which will allow us to direct the utilities to start their work uh, later this spring or in the summer. Uh, we're projecting to bid the project once the permit comes back, hopefully later this spring, 
and then have a contractor in hand to issue notice to proceed in the summer. Uh, that would actually want, um, line up very well for a summer fall 2021 construction season and then everything would be completed by the winter which would be ahead of the time when our, our grant funds will expire next year uh, in June of 2022. And the next couple slides are just some graphics of the existing conditions first, which kind of document the reasons behind uh, why this site was identified in the first place. You can see that the stream banks are heavily eroded. Um, you can see some exposed utility lines there. Uh, in the aerial image above, um, you can see just how constrained that stream is with apartment buildings on either side. Right now, the apartment complex mows pretty much right up to the edge of the stream, uh, which definitely isn't uh, an ideal situation, especially for a natural type of stream environment. So the proposed conditions on the next slide aim to restore the area kind of back to as much of a, a natural type of setting as possible. Um, you can see there that the, the green area is essentially going to be a, a buffer area with a, a meandering low flow channel stream with some uh, uh, flood bench wetland areas al along the channel. And uh, we have some examples of some of the vegetation that's, that's proposed uh, to be planted in those buffer areas shown at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, those are all native native plants to Pennsylvania that are, are tolerant to uh, the types of conditions that they'll be uh, exposed to in that kind of environment. And then the next slide is, is kind of a cross-sectional view uh, of what it would look like if you were standing in the stream. Uh, it's a little bit faint, but the dashed line kind of shows the present day conditions with the very steep banks um, the highly eroded area there around the channel. Uh, the intent of the design would be to, uh, as I mentioned before, create a, a flood bench wetland area so when the, the low flow channel fills up, there's room for the, uh, the flood waters to spill over uh, into that vegetation and um, filter out a lot of the pollutants um, uh, in the wetland meadow mix, you can kind of see that there. That's what's going to be planted in that area. Uh, and then the ryegrass seed mix will be planted in the upland areas. So it, it'll have much more of a natural feel to it once, once the project's complete. Uh, so we talked a little bit about our intern program. Uh, this is a product of last year's one of the two summer interns we had last year uh it's in the esri story map that we went over a few months back um, just shows the general project areas you can click on each one and kind of get additional information on exactly what's going on there um, and a good tool for us when we get phone calls you know asking about how the how this money's being spent um, we can actually show them some pictures and, and a map. Okay. So that concludes our five-year MS4 capital improvement plan, and I'll be happy to answer any questions the board has. Any questions from board members? Just a curious question about the er looking at the erosion. How, how far of a drop is it from the top all the way down to the bottom? It, it varies along the reach. Some areas, like the ones that were in the picture, can be as high as six or seven feet. Other areas, it's it's only two or three. Looks a lot deeper than that. Yeah, look at this this one here too, where the snow is. That, mm -hmm. that looks like it's like ten feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, feet. the yeah. picture's skewed a little bit to yeah. to fit it on this on the slide, but. If you just go down Colonial Road, you can see it right right from the yeah, road. Right. Where are the headwaters for that stream? Under the parking lot at the mall? Yeah, they, it, there's actually a large <clears throat> culvert that comes from the mall parking lot under Colonial Road that discharges there at the, um, the upstream end of the stream. 
surprised fencing isn't required to keep kids from sliding down there. Just from a strictly safety standpoint, I can't believe that we haven't found a few in there already. Now that you mentioned that, just want to make sure the authority board members are aware that we will not own this property when we're done. It is a temporary construction easement. So it is private property. Okay. Any other questions for board members? All right. Thank you, staff. Thank you, HRG. Very well done. Nice presentation. Let's move on to township reports. Um, letters and surveys to the BC7 and 8 residents. Drainage needs assessment survey form. Mr. Weaver. Yes, board members. Uh, Tim uh, can give you some more information, but Tim, Tim's idea was uh, we met with Jeff and Jason, and we, Tim suggested we send out a survey to 500 and some property owners, so I got a little nervous about that. I said, why do you want to do that? <laughs> well, because we have a lot of history that people call us after the project is over and say, hey, you didn't fix my stormwater problem. Well, you have to tell us about it before we start the work. Um, so we have a lot of examples uh, from the past that uh, we had to go out and try to fix paving or do whatever we could to try to alleviate some people's stormwater problems. But as you know, there's a lot we can't fix. So uh, Tim came up with a, a survey form that's in your packet. The list is basically everybody in BC7, that is our next sewer uh, consent decree sewer project. And as we just went over in our five-year plan, Wherever we're doing mini basin projects, since we are paving the street, we take care of the stormwater as well. So we sent out these, I think, actually it was about 480. Do you have the count, Tim? Uh, it was about four, just about 460. 460. And yeah. you want to tell them how many we got and what you found so far? Yeah, we have about a 5% return rate at this point. Um, pretty much with everybody indicating, you know, issues they have on their own private private property um, they have until March 31st to submit and there's been kind of all over area wise except for a cluster um, in the South Devonshire Heights area which is uh, right along Fairmont Drive uh, Clover Road Wheatfield Drive and Barley Corn Square and what we think is uh, the issue there is basically it's one of these developments that was done in the 1960s without a whole lot of, you know, design for where the where the runoff was going to go. So we have streets out there that are sitting about 10 feet higher than some of the surrounding properties and uh, issues with runoff in the backyards, uh, specifically on Wheatfield. So what, what the survey will do for us is just give us a little more information on what the actual problem is so then we can uh, team up with HRG and, and come up with a solution as, as part of uh, the design. Any questions uh, for Tim or I or HRG on the letter survey to the BC7 residents? Any questions at all for staff? All right. Hearing none. Engineer's report. Yeah, no, nothing in particular I'd like to call attention to, uh, but I am happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Looks like a lot of your engineer's reports already been sort of somewhat covered at this point. Any questions for the, for the engineer's report from anybody? I love it. You guys are doing it. It's just awesome. You sure you don't want to cover Stonebridge apartment stream restoration? <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> All right. So I think we just covered the stormwater fund. Let's move on to the sanitary sewer fund. Uh, first item of business is action on the mutual release and settlement of all claims agreement with CRW. Mr. Weaver. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. It's my pleasure to present the mutual release and settlement of all claims with CRW. This is for the period beginning October 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2020 for the CRW transmission and treatment services based on 
a rate per thousand gallons of water as calculated in the rate studies provided to LP by CRW. So as the board is aware, uh, special counsel back in 2017 recommended to the board as per the current intermunicipal agreement that we should be paying by water uh, uh, volumes consumed by our customers. We sent a letter to CRW. They told us that the rate study was already done. They couldn't do that. We went ahead and did it anyway, as recommended by council. So this is going on now for five years. CRW and Lower Paxton Authority and the other partners uh, have seemed to have worked out a lot of issues over the years. They have a new uh, CEO. They have a new CFO. Uh, they seem to have a competent staff that understands the global issues and not only the CRW issues. We thought it would be appropriate for us to make a settlement offer. As the board is aware, we offered, uh, let me get the exact figure for you, $1,009,587 to cover the settlement of the debt of one million four nine two four four one fifty five. This is for that period in the agreement from October 1st, 2016 to December 31st, 2020. And that would settle all of that prior debt up until uh, 2021. So in April, when we get our first quarter bill from CRW, we'll have a zero balance. And we will start paying by flat rate again, rather than water consumption. As the board is aware, we don't bill our customers residential for water. We found that over the years by doing it this way, although it was the correct way, uh, it's, it's a burden on staff. They have to build the system for 17,500 customers, assuming we're billing for water, even though we're not, because we have to input and output this data for CRW. So it was recommended that we go back to the old flat rate. CRW is okay with that. We've met with CRW um, by telephone. We, we didn't, didn't meet in person. So Steve and I met with uh, Doug Keith, who is their CFO, and Steve Hahn, who is the CRW solicitor. They've agreed to these terms. You have the red line version from CRW. They were just clean up things. So we believe that it's in final form, and it's favorable for the board to take action this evening. And I'll be happy to answer any questions as long as, as well as Solicitor Stein as well. Any questions for Mr. Weaver, Mr. Stein? All I got to say is well done to township staff, well done to the solicitor for being able to negotiate this very favorable contract um, that's in the benefit of Lower Paxton Township here. So, um, you know, this is a significant savings that, you know, we can utilize within our other projects. So, again, well done. Any other comments? Well, we agree. Okay. Uh, hearing no other comments. Motion one to obtain a motion to take action on the mutual release. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the mutual release and settlement of all claims against with CRW presented by Mr. Weaver. Submission on the floor by Ms. Lindsay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Navarro. Any further discussion? Uh, let's do this by roll call vote. Keep you on your toes over there. Ms. Smith. Mrs. Ramsey. Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Do your do your do your job, guys, and go make it happen. We will okay. do it. All right. Moving on. Resolution twenty one oh four and twenty one oh five authorizing condemnation of sanitary sewer easements for the Spring Creek sewer replacement project. Mr. Weaver. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you've seen these a few times. These are the standard resolutions for acquiring permanent and temporary construction easements. The project has three easements. It's the Spring Creek Interceptor Project. Uh, we have one easement signed. We have two have not signed. The project's scheduled to be bid in May. Now, one of these property owners that's uh, on the list tonight for condemnation did send me an email saying they're willing to cooperate. They want to negotiate with Steve and I, and they want to review the project. However, I still recommend you approve the resolution because it doesn't mean anything at this point until basically that's what the resolution allows us, Steve and 
and I to negotiate with the property owner. So we're recommending resolution 2104 and 2105 authorizing the condemnation of these easements and allowing Steve and I to negotiate with the owners. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Pretty basic standard uh, e um, condemnation easements. Um, any questions from anybody on staff? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve 2104 and 2105? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve action on resolution 2104 and 2105 authorizing condemnation of sanitary sewer easements for the Spring Creek sewer replacement project as presented by Mr. Weaver. It's a motion on the floor by Mr. Zumas. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Oaks, second. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, I think we can do this by voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. All right. Final item of business, Resolution 2106, authorizing signatories at Fulton Bank. Mr. Weaver. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this, again, is a standard banking resolution that the board has seen many times, is to authorize staff to access the accounts and sign checks. Our previous accountant was the only proof signer at Fulton for our CRIM account. We have $1.5 million as an investment of your cash. This cash investment account... Uh, requires this resolution to allow myself and our two new accountants to be signers and access the account. And that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. So are we banking at SNA and Fulton with the sewer? So yeah, we, we, we bank at SNA. This is just a, a an investment like CDs. They, it's a cash investment, so they can do commercial paper, CDs, whatever. We only have 1.5 million that was sort of like a test years ago, and they did pretty well. So we're still looking at with Jay and John on what the best uh, cash management uh, avenues are for the for the uh, reserve cash, and we haven't gotten that far yet. But Jay and John have volunteered to help at no cost, which is great because they're a big help. So then everything else is at SNA. Yeah. So basically, all the banking's in SNA. This is just some investment, mm -hmm. you know, taking some of the reserve cash, putting it over there, earning interest. Okay. Great. Yep. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, the resolution here. Is there a motion on the floor to approve resolution 2106 with the new authorized signatories at Fulton Bank? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve resolution 2106 um, authorizing signatures at Fulton Bank as outlined by Mr. Weaver. Solid effort there, Mr. Navarro. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Ramsey. He's jumping in there. Okay. Any further discussion? I think we do this by voice vote as well. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, staff. Thank you to the township manager, the solicitor, HRG. Uh, thank you to the board members. Well done. Um, I appreciate everybody's attention and efforts tonight. We got that done in an hour. And um, it is 8.02. Next meeting will be April 27, 2001, here, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., not a.m., 7 p.m. here. Um, that's the only last comment to be made. Any other further comments from board members? All right, hearing none, motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved.